I know it's all you care about, so I thought I'd start with lens flare. You'll see here that flare is nicely moderate by some standards. It's certainly present and obvious, but not to the extent that it will overwhelm the subject and become the focus of the shot itself. The flare is cooler than in the 60mm and shows more blue, but Great Joy is promising a version with amber coloured flare to please those who prefer the warmth of the first lens, me included. To an extent, the colour of the streaks either side of highlights depends upon the source of the light, and some cold car headlights, for example, create more blue than regular lights. Generally though, the flare is very pleasant and moderate, but also easy to create when you want it. We've already seen an anamorphic lens from Great Joy, but last time it was the 60mm T2.9 1.33x model that had the option of a 1.35x adapter to take the squeeze to 1.8x. This new lens already has a 1.8x squeeze without an adapter. It's a 50mm and like the previous model, it's designed for full frame cameras. Well, full frame with a crop, but I'll come to that later. Again, like the previous model, this 50mm T2.9 is very nicely made. Feels solid without weighing too much, and it's relatively compact. It's small and light enough to be used handheld for extended periods, and its size means it doesn't look out of place on the front of more compact bodies like this Lumix S5. The focus and aperture rings are nicely geared, turn smoothly and offer just enough resistance. The focus ring turns easily and the aperture ring is tensioned so we don't turn it by accident. My version is designed for the PL mount, so I've added an MTF services adapter so it will fit onto my L mount camera. But I'm told the lens will be available in L along with EF, E, RF and Micro Four Thirds once full production begins. While the lens fits on full frame cameras, if you shoot using the full width of the frame, you'll need to crop the extreme left and right edges off the image due to vignetting, as is the case actually with the 60mm when the adapter is used. This isn't really an issue, as a 16x9 recording area will de-squeeze to a 3.2 to 1 image, and no one will want to watch that. I found cropping off the shaded areas still leaves us with a 2.95 to 1 clean image which is still much wider than you'd use. So there's plenty of room for software slider effects, even with a 2.66 to 1 frame. And there's even more to play with, with the regular 2.39 to 1 timeline. Great Joy has suggested that the lens could be used in Super 35 and APS-C recording modes for safety. And that does indeed eliminate the need for cropping and post-production. But it also deprives us of a good deal of the width of the lens, as well as some of the height of its covering circle. Via experiments I've found I'd prefer to shoot full frame and to crop after for a wide angle frame, or to shoot Super 35mm to get a tighter frame. The setup I liked best though came when I mounted the lens on the Lumix S1H and shot in 5.4K using the 3 by 2 aspect ratio at 25 or 30p. The slight crop from the full frame sensor you get when not shooting open gate at 24p is just enough to remove the vignetting while retaining a lovely wide angle view for a 2.66 to 1 final image. The lens also works nicely on Micro Four Thirds cameras, they obviously with a narrower angle of view. I've used it in regular 16 and 17 benign modes as well as in Panasonic's anamorphic modes and all produce a very nice result indeed. By my unscientific reckoning, the uncropped full frame image gives us the angle of view we'd normally see from a 20mm lens, while the expected 28mm horizontal view only comes when we crop the frame to 2.39 to 1. And 28mm is what we're paying for, as 50mm divided by 1.8 is just under 28mm, it's 27.7 recurring. So this 28mm view matches up nicely with the 33mm view that we get from the existing 60mm Great Joy with the 1.35 adapter attached. One's wide and one's wider. Well, you're probably wondering how I met my third wife. And uh, the focus highlights are also nicely created with that elliptical upright cat's eye shape taking form and, uh, right across the frame and getting gradually more pronounced and towards the corners. The highlights are clean too and generally free of too much distracting pattern, which allows them to exist in the frame without drawing too much attention. They're supposed to be decorative, not the main draw after all. 
The lens is nicely sharp when you need it to be and is more than usable at the widest apertures. Inevitably, things get sharper as we close down, but you don't have to go too far beyond T4 to get a very sharp picture. Distortion is somewhat more pincushion than barreling, which I found quite surprising for a wide lens. But either way, it isn't dramatic and it will slim your subject nicely. It's actually quite interesting. It's a Turkish delight. I feel lumber again. It's there yeah. coming because it's this road. It's yeah. Edward. Edward. Yeah. Which channel is this one? Yeah. Which channel? Uh, it's not. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's uh, for education. Uh, for education? Yes. We are big. Yes. We are big. So, in short, this great joy 50mm T2.9 1.8 times anamorphic is a very nice and versatile lens. That on first inspection at least, performs really rather well. It's great that it offers a 1.8 times squeeze, and it's also great that it doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Although it's hard to say it forms a set with the existing 60mm T2.9 1.33 times lens, when the 1.35 times adapter is fitted, the two horizontal focal lengths become 28mm and 33mm, so they do work sensibly together. I really like the 60mm with its adapter, and so far I'm really liking this 50mm, and I'm looking forward to shooting with it some more.